Thanks for joining us for today's message. We are currently in a 10-week campaign entitled Daring Faith, where we are dedicated to growing everybody's faith, both individually and corporately as a body of Christ. And we'd love to connect with you and learn if this ministry has been a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can send us an email to info at hftwchurch.org. If you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by visiting hftwchurch.org forward slash give. We pray that this message would be a blessing to you and that it would inspire you to live in the daring faith that Jesus has for you. We're going to continue our series today on daring faith. We launched a couple weeks ago. And this is a big um, series in our church. God is going to do some amazing things. You're going to hear more about uh, specifically uh, what that looks like. But today, I want to just continue this series. And what I want to share with you is about moving from fear to faith. Fear to faith. The Bible says that for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And many of us today, all of us today, to some degree, are dealing with fear. Um, some more than others. Fear can exert great power over our lives. It prevents us from trying new things, thinking new thoughts, and believing God for greater things in our lives. All of us understand fear, especially in our country. Um, I've had some fears that we're going to elect the, the wrong president, um, not naming any names. Um, that's kind of a fear that I have. Uh, fear of terrorism. The world is evil, right? It's dangerous. There's a fear of, for our safety. There's a fear of, you know, job loss. Or there's a fear of death. Death is a big fear, right? What's going to happen when I die? Our fears can be very wide-ranging. Some fears can be silly, and some fears can be serious. Um, growing up, I had a tremendous fear of vegetables. Um, I wouldn't eat vegetables. And God, in his sense of humor, gave me a wife who is a food connoisseur and loves vegetables. And one time she was telling me, I really want some arugula right now. And I just thought maybe she was saying a bad word. I was like, what is arugula? Never even heard of it. It's a vegetable, if you didn't know. I didn't know until I was 35, so... Arugula, kale, I've never heard of these things, yeah, but my wife. <laughs> so uh, it's funny, she's not laughing right now, by the way. <laughs> I have this weird thing with, fear, uh, with food. I think it's a texture thing, I don't know. So I don't try new things. Uh, I'm very cautious. I have my, you know, six foods that I eat, and that's pretty much it. So anyway, fears can be, you know... From minor to more major, right? Fear, uh, fear of admitting a sin that you've been struggling with. And that sin keeps you in bondage because you're afraid to share it. Or fear of sharing something that bad that happened to you. You know, fear of sharing that, hey, I was abused as a child. Or a fear of saying, hey, you know what? I've hurt people really bad. I've actually abused people. And we hide in fear because we're too afraid of what would happen if those things came to light. Fear can exert great power over our life. The enemy uses fear to keep us from operating in faith so that we miss out on the rewards that God has for us. The enemy wants us to be defeated. Look at this verse in Hebrews, in your notes, it says, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Our God is a rewarder, and the enemy wants to steal from us rewards and blessing that he wants to give in our life. And one of the ways he does that is by keeping us bound in fear. And that's what this campaign is about. It's about moving beyond old expectations or old boundaries. It's, it's moving beyond old lame prayers like, Oh God, help me make it through today. Or, Oh God, change my spouse. Or, Oh God, give me a new job. 
This series is all about moving beyond those prayers to now conquering. Oh God, change me so that I can bring light into my marriage. Oh God, let me be in your instrument for change in my workplace so that my boss will see your glory and change the environment in which I work. It's moving beyond the old. It's moving into the promised land. It's moving away from the wilderness where there's dry and a weary land where there is no water to a place where there is the river of life flowing freely every day. Last week I shared about the schemes of the enemy. I shared that we're in a battle, that we're in a spiritual battle, and the enemy brings lies. The enemy is a liar, and he brings temptation and accusation against us. And I talked about the power of our belief, and when we believe lies, we limit the freedom that we have in God. And when I talk about fear, fear is the result, it's the outcome of one of the biggest lies that the enemy brings. The enemy brings a lie, and underneath every fear or most fear is a lie that says, God is not big enough to handle this problem that you're facing or this fear that you have. Underneath every fear is a lie that says, don't trust God with your whole heart because you might be let down. You can't really trust God in this area because what happens if he doesn't come through? And so we end up tormenting ourselves. like, why, why do I have all this fear? Um, why is my life controlled by these thoughts? Why am I not getting victory? And it's because the enemy has planted a lie in our heart and we don't even see it and we don't even realize that we are doubting God's power and God's authority and God's favor. And as a result, we live in fear. And so today I want to share with you that when we let God replace our fear with faith, we can overcome. For every fear, there is faith that God will give us to promote us to a higher level of authority and blessing. What I want to talk to you about um, is a story that probably all of you know, or most of you know, and that's the story about David and Goliath. It's the famous Bible passage, and it can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'm not going to be able to read it all because it's over 50 verses, so I'm going to kind of just summarize it and refer to it uh, during the rest of this service. So the story of David and Goliath. Um, the Israelites were God's chosen people. God had called them to be his people, and he had blessed them, and he had done miracles uh, throughout their history. And, and so here they were, and they were about to go into battle with the Philistines. And these Philistines wanted um, to basically, you know, destroy Israel. And the Philistines had this champion named Goliath. Now, Goliath was a very large man, probably upwards of nine feet tall. I'm a short guy. I'm 5'6", so if he was standing here, you know, he'd be almost double me. Uh, giant, just huge. Uh, he was a champion, he was a trained warrior, professional hero. <laughs> Goliath was also well equipped with all the latest armor. The, the passage goes into great detail about Goliath, what Goliath was wearing. He was wearing over 125 pounds of bronze and iron. He was completely equipped for battle. The thought of anyone beating him seemed impossible. And so for 40 days, Goliath comes out. As the armies face each other, Goliath comes out, and he says, Hey, I challenge you all to a duel. Let's do this mano y mano, man to man. No reason for all of us to die. You just send out your best guy, and I'll face him. And whoever wins uh, gets, to be, gets to dominate the other. The loser has to be the slave of the winner. And so for 40 days, Goliath would come out and he would mock the Israelites and he would taunt them and he would say, you can't beat me. 
Who can challenge me? And the Israelites were completely in fear. And so finally on the 40th day, here the armies are, they're lined up, and Goliath comes out and he taunts them. And the Israelites just scatter. They just start running scared. Well, it just so happens that this guy David shows up. His brothers were in the army, and so he shows up to bring some food. And so he's, he's seeing this. He's like, what's going on here? And he, he says, who is this person that is defying the living God? Basically, why are you guys running scared? David goes on, and he starts asking around. He's like, hey, what's the reward for killing this guy? God wants to take him down. What's the reward for this? He asks three different times, what's the reward? Finally, David gets a chance to speak with Saul, who is the king of Israel. He convinces Saul, hey, God wants to, wants to fight on our behalf. God wants to give us a victory. And so he convinces Saul to let him fight. David tries on Saul's armor, doesn't fit. David's like, nah, I don't want the armor. David goes out to meet Goliath with his staff, with his sling, and five stones. Goliath is insulted. He says, who are you? You're just a boy. I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds. And David says, you come at me with sword and javelin, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. You will be defeated today. You will be conquered, and I will kill you. And sure enough, David runs towards Goliath. He takes his slingshot. He throws a rock. It strikes Goliath right in the forehead. It penetrates the skin. I don't know how deep, but it does. And Goliath falls flat on his face. And David runs over, grabs Goliath's sword, kills him, chops off his head. Kind of gory, kind of brutal. But he wins. And then the Israelites chase the Philistines. Now it's the Philistines who are scared. And the Israelites win a great battle. Now this story has a lot of great principles in it. Most commonly people think, well, Goliath represents our fears and David's the conqueror and he's, and if you just fight your giants, you'll overcome and, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. But there's so much more to the story than that. And I want to kind of talk about these things. For, I want us to, to try to identify ourselves in each one of the main players in this story. First, Goliath. Goliath had faith and he had fear. How many of you know all of us have faith? It's just what is our faith in? Is our faith in our money? Is our faith in our job? Is our faith in our family? Is our faith in our talent, our skill? Goliath's faith wasn't in God. It was in himself. Goliath also had fear, but Goliath dealt with his fear the way that the world teaches us to deal with our fear. Even our universities teach things like this, or if you read self-help books, there may be a lot of different uh, tactics or options for dealing with fear, but some of the basics are the world will tell you to overcome your fear, build up your self-esteem, visualize success, and block out your fears. And if you do that, your fear won't control you. And so you can even see this in Goliath. Read this in verse 42 through 44. I put in your notes. Goliath, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy, am I a dog that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. So you see Goliath, the way he deals with fear. First he builds himself up. Who are you? Look at me. I'm nine feet tall. I got the latest equipment. Look at my assets. Look at these guns. You got no chance, right? He's building himself up. And then he's visualizing success. There's no way you can beat me. There's not a chance in the world. And he completely blocks out fear. You don't even read that Goliath's afraid. You know, fear, actually, God can use fear to drive us to him. The fact that he had no fear was actually a dangerous thing. Because he went into battle with the shields down. 
He, he, there was no possibility that he would lose in his mind. And because he had no holy fear, <laughs> he went down in a mighty way. And you see this uh, in many people in the world, how they deal with their fears, how they overcome. The problem with this way of, of overcoming fear is it's a very me-focused, a very self-centered way of overcoming fear. And it, usually the result is you attempt to gain power over other people so that you'll feel good about yourself. You know, many bullies, they're bullies because they're afraid. And they become bullies because they can never let you see their fear. They can never let you know that they're hurt or they're struggling. And so they attempt to feel good about themselves by becoming powerful and lording it over you. This type, this approach to getting rid of fear also tends to ignore reality and is usually an unsustainable method of dealing with fear. Goliath completely ignored the possibility that he could lose. Remember the, the financial crash in 08? A lot of people lost a lot of money. And there were some high-profile suicides at that time. People that had be, been very wealthy and they lost everything. Why did they kill themselves? Well, it was because they put their trust in their money. And when they lost everything, the fear that overtook them of, what's going to happen to me? I don't have my money. I'm not okay. I'm not secure. I'm not safe. I'm not powerful anymore. That fear was stronger than their desire to even live. This kind of fear can completely um, affect every relationship Everything that we do in life. I remember as a young man, I really struggled with lust. And I had a lot of shame about that, you know, that I was struggling with lustful thoughts. And I remember I was so afraid to talk about it. I was afraid to tell people how much I was struggling. And as a result of my fear of sharing what I was dealing with, I began to isolate. I had friends, but I wasn't hanging out with my friends anymore. I began to isolate. I began to lose my self-confidence. I began to even like my. I, began, I stopped liking myself. I, I, I was giving so much power to fear that it was affecting everything in my life. And it was all because I was afraid for anybody to see who I really was and what I was really struggling with. Goliath completely put his faith in his ability and ignored David's weapon. David's weapon, he had a sling, but the sling wasn't like a toy. It wasn't just some uh, thing that wasn't dangerous. You know, some of the Romans actually thought that the sling was more potent than an arrow. When you got that sling going, you could throw a rock 60 miles an hour. And so David got that thing going, and it was deadly. It hit Goliath. But because he was never, he never fathomed that he could lose, he went into battle completely unprepared. The second group of people in this story is the Israelites. I really identify with these guys. The Israelites had no faith and all fear. These guys' knees were knocking. They were running. They were scattering. They had no, they, didn't, they weren't putting their faith in God. They weren't putting their faith in themselves. They, they didn't know what to do. They had no solution for this Goliath, for this giant that wanted to kill them and destroy them and put them into slavery. When you operate by faith like the Israelites, you can even see how that, faith, that, that fear begins to cloud your judgment. It begins to affect your relationships and limit you from walking in freedom. I put this verse in here from the story. This is when Goliath had taunted them for the last time and, and David was there and David's brother comes up to him and, and Eliab and he says, what are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. Now this was his brother. 
This was someone that loved him, and yet, because he was so afraid, he was now judging his brother's heart. You're full of deceit and pride. What is that? When we're controlled by fear, we start saying things, we start acting out in ways that would never be in line with our character or in a way that would honor God. Where are you afraid today? Where are you struggling with fear? Wherever that place is, there's something underneath there that's trying to convince you that God's not big enough to handle your fear. There's something that's elevated on the throne of your heart above God. Wherever your fear is, there's something that's bigger than God in your life. And God wants to take it from you, and he wants to be the Lord over that place. And then the last person in the story, obviously, is David. David faced the same fear that everyone else felt, but instead of running, he chose faith. This verse, in verse 26, he said, Who is this pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David understood his position as a child of God. This is so key, folks. Do you realize when you follow Christ, you're a son or daughter of the Most High God. You now have access to the King of Kings. You now have been given the authority from heaven to kill giants. When David looked at Goliath, he didn't see Goliath. He saw his God standing next to Goliath, who was infinitely bigger and stronger and more powerful than Goliath. He wasn't even so much concerned about the giant. He was thinking, man, God is going to reward me. I'm going to get a blessing. The reward for David was he was going to get to marry into the royal family, and none of his family was going to have to pay taxes. That was a great reward. And David was like, man, God has got this. Why aren't you guys taking advantage of this reward? The second thing that David knew was, was that there is no battle without a blessing. There's no attack without a victory when we walk in faith. This is so huge. David knew that God was going to bless him. The very thing that the enemy brings in your, into your life to cause you to live in fear, that very thing is what God wants to use to promote you. Goliath was there to destroy David, and, but David, by faith, knew that he wasn't going to destroy him. God was going to use Goliath to promote him. Whatever fear you're facing today, Satan means it for bad, but God wants to use it for his glory. He wants to flip it around. He wants to promote you. He wants to bless you. What is your fear today? Are you afraid of being alone? Well, God wants to use that fear for his glory. He wants to make you into a friend to somebody who's lonely and to bring the light of God into their life. Are you afraid of lack? Are you afraid of not being able to pay the bills or of losing your job? God wants to take that fear and flip it for his glory. He wants to make you a river of generosity. He wants to release through you his blessing so that you can bless other people. Satan means it for your destruction. God wants to use it for his glory. Are you afraid of admitting to somebody who you are, what you've done in the past, how you've messed up, how you've blown it? God wants to flip that fear and use it for his glory. He wants you to trust him to share that thing that you did, that violation with, a, with someone who loves you so that he can give you freedom from shame, so that he can help you overcome that sin, so that your life can be a testimony for somebody else that is struggling the same way you are. Everything that the enemy means to keep you in bondage, God wants to use it to promote you and bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
I just want to invite my wife to share. I love hearing her talk, and it's a new season, and I just think God's calling us to be a team, and so I just want you to listen to her for a few minutes because she's fun to listen to. So here's my wife, Sarah. That, but can you hear me? Well, one of the, I just love this story. Love it. It is one of my favorite things um, in the Bible. And um, for most of my life, I really identified with the Israelites. Knee knocker. Really had a yoke of fear in my life. And a lot of things controlled me. And um, so I've been on this journey of letting God turn me into David. And, um, and so this, um, this, at the end of the week, it was about Friday, I think, um, you know, Jay and I, we just felt really heavy, and uh, it was just this heavy weight, and um, we were kind of just like, what is this? And uh, we, we just said, you know, this is intercession. This is, we're interceding right now. We feel this intercession in our spirits for what, um, for what God wants us to do, and our, or what God wants for us as a community, and um, our marriage, and, and your marriage, your marriages, just all of our relationships. And um, so we, um, I had a a real amazing encounter. Um, We were were just praying, and that night, late that night, I had an encounter with the Lord. And um, he just brought me to the scripture, and I didn't bring my phone up, Rod, so (laughs) I'll read it to you. So this is 2 Corinthians 4, um, 16 through 17. And it's, therefore, we do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, exhausted, and wearied out through fear. Though our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day after day. For our light, for our light momentary affliction, this slight distress of the passing hour is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparisons and all calculations of vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Woo! Right? This is a promise and a half. And as I read this, I just kept reading it over, and I was like, God, this is so good. This is so good. And I was just having this excitement in my spirit. And I was like, this, <laughs> when we, we can trade our weight our weighty worldly weight for the weighty goodness of God. Wow. And so I was like, yeah, I want that. And I want that. And I just was saying yes. And I was just experiencing this excitement um, with the Holy Spirit because I really feel um, his wind blowing, the Spirit. This is a new season, and we are um, entering a season of greater faith and trust in the Lord, and um, and it's amazing, and it's so fun. And I know um, that David got a perspective of God because he was in the field worshiping. You know, he worshiped and worshiped, and that cultivated a perspective of partnering with God, no matter what the outside circumstance looked like. And so I just bless you, and I know that we're doing this together, and I just, if you want to go home this week, read this scripture and just say, I receive it. Yes, give me the glory. Let's I want to share this with you, Jesus. Take my spirit up and renew it every day. I just see that God wants to make us big giants, that we could step on giants in the world, in our city, and and in, in, in our church, and he wants to do this all together. Amen. Thanks. So how do we replace fear with faith? First, remember who your father is. Your inheritance is secure. Your position is sure. The outcome has been decided. When you're a son or daughter of the living God, 
you can trust him. No matter what happens on earth. You know, fear, uh, faith doesn't mean the absence of fear. Faith means having the confidence to do the right thing, even when you are afraid. Remember Esther? She was standing, she was going to stand before the king on behalf of her people. Uh, and she was afraid. And her famous words, if I die, I die. She did the right thing, even if it meant losing her life. Her faith was stronger than her fear. Remember Jesus in the garden? He was afraid. Our own Lord, he was afraid. He knew that dying was going to be not fun and painful and humiliating. But Jesus' faith was greater than his fear. Why was he able to do that? Why was he able to go forward with letting himself be crucified when he could have wiped out everyone that wanted to crucify him? Why did he do that? Hebrews 12 says it was for the joy that was set before him that he did it. And you know what the joy was? Us. The only thing that Jesus was missing in heaven was us. And Jesus was looking forward to the joy. And when you have faith, you have joy. There's a scripture in Psalms 30 that says, Though weeping may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. And for the Christian, joy is always coming. Joy is always coming, even when you lose things here on earth. Even if you lose people you love, even if you lose a job, even if you lose your health, joy is always coming. It's coming in the morning. We don't lose, guys. We don't lose in the end. We win. The end of the story is written. We win. And we will spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. I love the, the, the verse that, the, the thing that David said, verse 45 and 46. He said, David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you. And I just felt like the Lord wanted us each of us to speak that prayer prophetically over our fears. Whatever your fear is, God wants you to speak prophetically this prayer against that fear. Satan, you have come against me with the fear of being alone, the fear of being known, the fear of losing my life, the fear of being separated from God, the fear from my life spinning out of control. Whatever your fear is, Satan, whatever that fear is, you come at me with fear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. Heaven of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of all the earth, whom you have defied, Satan. Today, he will crush you. Today, you will be defeated in Jesus' name. Whatever your fear is, take this passage and read it and declare it over your life this week. Second, be willing to try something that you've never done before in faith. Faith requires action. Remember the, the message Pastor Dale gave a couple weeks ago. He said, if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. The only way that you can overcome is to activate your faith. God wants to show you something that you can do practically to start walking in faith. David, when he was standing before Goliath, he ran he took a step. He wasn't waiting for the giant to come to him. He went to the giant and he threw that rock. And it's the same thing for us. Whatever giant you're facing, whatever fear you're facing, whatever that thing that is keeping you bound, God wants you to take a step. And he's going to show you what that is. Maybe you're afraid to share your faith with other people. and God wants you to take a step. Maybe you're afraid to, sh to admit your sin. God wants you to take a step. And he'll meet you there. He'll meet you. And third, receive faith as a free gift. We don't get faith through self-will or self-righteousness. I don't need to give myself a pep talk and say, come on, Jason, have some faith today. That's not the way it works because I can't generate my own faith. I need faith from God. He will give it to me as a free gift. Goliath was a champion 
who wanted to stand on behalf of his people. David was a champion who stood on behalf of his people. But Jesus is our champion who stood on behalf of you and me. This story of David is just a picture of our Savior. It's a picture of Jesus who's overcome. And I put this in your notes. David fought the Philistines on behalf of Israel. Jesus fought Satan on behalf of all mankind. David walked into the shadow of death. Jesus walked into death to secure eternal life. David risked his life to save people. Jesus gave his life to save you and me. David faced a giant. Jesus faced the ultimate fear. Do you know what the ultimate fear is? To be separated from God forever. That's the worst nightmare to come true, is to not be with Jesus in eternity. And Jesus on the cross, the Father turned away. He was separated from God on the cross. He faced that nightmare so that we never have to face it. We don't have to be apart from God because Jesus faced it on the cross. David won a battle against the giant. Jesus won the war against sin and death. And today, wherever you're feeling fear, the Lord wants to bring his love. You know, the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Do you know that perfect love has a name? His name is Jesus. The Bible says that God is love. Perfect love has entered into the room. He's here right now. Wherever perfect love is, there's no fear. Fear has to leave. Fear has to flee. Wherever you're feeling afraid today, let perfect love in. Let Jesus in because it cannot. It cannot stay. It must bow to the authority of Jesus. As we close, I just wanted to share with you a couple things that the Lord um, was showing me. Uh, I referred to this last week. Sarah and I went to this marriage conference, and during the course of the conference, as people, you know, we had different prayer times, and people were giving prophetic words to me. They were praying for me, and they were speaking prophetically over what God wanted to do in my life. And so as I was praying for you all, I just felt like the Lord was saying, um, Jason, those words, yes, they were for you, but I want, I want those words for the whole church. These are really to be given away to the whole church. And so the first word that, that was spoken, and both of the words really line up a lot with this story. The first word that was spoken was, um, you've been in the fields tending the sheep just like David. You've been a faithful follower. You've been doing what God's called you to do. But now God's calling you into battle. God's calling you to be a giant killer. And I just want to speak that word prophetically over all of you. Many of you have been faithfully following the Lord for many years. And God is saying, now it's time. Now it's time to be giant killers. Now it's time to take the battle to the gates of hell, to the Goliaths in your life, to the Goliaths in your family's life, your friends. God wants you to be giant killers. You know, with Pastor Dale getting injured, it would be easy for us to be afraid. What's going to happen to our church? What's going to happen to Pastor Dale? The enemy meant that for harm. The enemy wants us to be scared. But God wants to use that very thing for our promotion. God wants to use that very thing to now empower all of us to be giant killers. It's not just Pastor Dale and a few. It's all of us. And the other word was, you are a secret weapon in the Lord's quiver and you're about to be released. Secret weapon. And the Lord is speaking to all of you, all of us. You are a secret weapon about to be released. This this happened like less than four weeks ago. And I didn't even know what that meant. But God knew he was preparing me. My dad got injured. 
And now I'm here sharing with you. I'm being released to kill giants. But God is releasing you. The secret weapon in, in this church is not Pastor Dale and it's not me. The secret weapon in this church is you. What the enemy didn't count on is if this church comes together and rises up in faith, that we will be an unstoppable force to be reckoned with. And the gates of hell will not prevail in Las Cruces, in our homes. You know, one of the amazing things about that story was David only killed Goliath. He, he hit him with the sling, but then he took the sword that Goliath was going to use to kill David, and he killed him. And that very thing is what God wants to do for you. The very thing that Satan wants to kill you with, God wants to give you that sword to defeat him with. And Jesus is releasing you to be a giant killer and to be the secret weapon. And today, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, wants to breathe a spirit of faith in this room. He wants to release faith that you would believe that you don't have to be bound by fear anymore, that you could overcome whatever fear you are facing in your life. The Holy Spirit is here and he wants to breathe that in this place. And I want to just invite you to stand. We're going to close. And if you bow your heads with me, and some of you, some of you today say, Jason, I'm afraid that right now I might be separated from God. I don't have Jesus as the Lord of my life. And I don't want to live in fear that I won't be with him forever. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. And if that's you, if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, if He's not the Lord of your life, then He can't be the Lord of your fears. And I just want to invite you, if that's you, would you just raise your hand with me? Is there anyone in here that would say, I don't know Jesus. I don't know if I would go to heaven. I see those hands. I'm just going to pray for you real quick. And if you just repeat after me, Dear Jesus, I'm so afraid being separated from you but I thank you that you made a way that I don't have to be Jesus would you forgive me of my sin I'm so sorry for breaking your heart Lord I believe that you died on the cross and rose from the dead and I receive you in my life in Jesus name Others of you, just as I, I've said, the Lord wants to release a spirit of faith. There's anointing for faith in this place. And I'm going to just invite you, if you want to receive faith today, to just come forward and stand up here and hold your hands out and just receive what the Lord has. Our prayer teams will come. They'll lay their hands on you just from behind and just gently agree with whatever God is doing. But if that's you, just come forward and I'm just going to pray for you to receive the gift of faith right now. Just come forward. Don't be afraid. Our fe your fears have controlled you long enough. There is no reason to bow to these fears anymore. There's every reason to come receive faith right now that God could overcome your fears in Jesus' name. Don't be afraid. Don't miss this chance. Father, I pray that you would release faith right now in the name of Jesus. Faith is a gift. It's your gift. It's not ours. It's yours. And we receive it right now. Breathe faith right now in every heart in the name of Jesus, God. Faith to be overcomers. Faith to conquer every giant. Faith to battle every fear. Faith to receive the goodness of God. God, you're good. You're the rewarder. We have an inheritance, God, and by faith we receive it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, God wants to show you something that he wants you to do to take a step of faith. Whatever it is, you've already taken one step, and I commend you, and I'm so proud of you. 
And God's going to just begin to speak to you things that He wants you to do to begin to walk in faith, to begin to conquer the giants in your life. And just listen to Him. Just be open to what He's doing.